Hello, welcome to another tutorial with me, Slammer423, or Dave, if you'd like to call me that. Uh, we're going to learn how to use the standard scenario marker and tools in this uh, tutorial to help you get you going with making your own scenarios for Railworks 2 Train Simulator. We're going to be using the EPB in this tutorial uh, and my private test room, which is, I'm, I might update again and, and send that to the public, I'm not sure, depends on the, the interest in it. And uh, the EPB is available from the UK Train Sim site, uktrainsim.com. Uh, and the reskins of the NSC and Southwest Trains early livery uh, are available from rwtrainsim.co.uk. Uh, in our forums, so that would be rstrainsim.co.uk forward slash forums. Uh, in the download section, they're done by Will. So uh, grab your copy and uh, enjoy classic slam direction with these fantastic liveries. So we are now, I prepared this uh, area before Railworks crashed, and luckily it saved the marker only, so we're somewhere there. So I'm going to name me scenario. Uh, if you haven't seen my other tutorial on laying a standard scenario, uh, well, a free roam scenario, check it out. It's in the in, in the related videos below. So what we're going to do is name the scenario. So we're going to call this Slammer Circular. Uh, I'm going to forget that bit. I'm going to slam door trains. Don't worry, that's my new alias on the internet. Slam door trains because I was a bit biased just to 42 freeze. Uh, apples for clear summer, and I'm going to make that 1500. Right, so if you haven't already, make sure that uh, you activate anything you are planning to use that is not default by using your content filter, which is that object there, the object set filter, as you can see there. Uh, I'll need to probably re up. To reactivate DRB sim stuff, which is here, yep, yeah, UK, and that's done. So that's all I wanted to activate there. I might activate another one late if I feel the need to. So now I'm going to get one I prepared earlier. I'm going to make a 12 coach here. So let's do a NSE to lead it, and then we'll do a stagecoach or SWT there and just to add to it, I might just put that the other way around and make it a sort of the new lead and the old actually or maybe not I don't know uh, I'll leave it and I'll put another NSE on there it's going to be a very interesting uh, combination but I don't mind and Network South Eastern's the early days of Southwest trains were the best um, the Desaros would look a little better in that, I think. I think the Desaros could do a lick of paint there. I know they based them upon the old slam door livery because you can still see the blue, orange and red in there. So uh, possibly they, they've just obviously updated it, but uh, the blue is a bit too dark for my liking. Anyway, enough about moaning about that. So we have now got our train consist to use on the route. Like so. I need to move that over actually, so I need to uh, select that there and that selects the whole consist so you can move it onto the right track that would be a great start wouldn't it so we're going to move it into that position there like so and then i'm going to need to add a driver icon which is the player train so do that and i need to double now i need to go into uh, the timetable view as you can see here's our train service one i'll need to double click on that and change the special to express passenger because that's what it's going to be uh, it's the player train so make sure you tick that box there it starts at 1500 and change the name to 4z92 and make sure to do that and then close that and then uh, the final destination so you can do that before or after you've added your uh, instructions i'm going to do it afterwards so i'm going to set up my pickup passenger instructions so my first passenger pickup will be at the station just ahead of me i'm not going to do it to all stations do it to that station there so we click on that there and it'll instruct me to stop there and then we'll add another one because it's an express we'll add the next one 
up here. But we will need probably to add uh, a go via instruction, or add the flag, I should say. But I'll tell you what that means in a moment. So I'll instruct it to call at this platform here. If it doesn't already recognize the Oh, it has actually picked up the way it should go. That's very nice of it. So I don't need to add a, an instruction there. It's gone the way I want it to, the way I would have programmed it to if it hadn't have done, which is good because it's done that straight away. And then we'll go. The next stop after that will be my final destination because otherwise it will just take too long. So we're going to put another destination in here, which is the Highland Forest Platform 1 and 2 and Platform 2. And then we're going to terminate the service at Platform 2 because that's otherwise we're going to be here all night explaining it. So don't need to do everything that big. So that will do for now. And then I think that's fine. So next thing I'll need to do is uh, tell you how to add a artificial train or an artificial service. I'll change the head code on that in a moment. So we need to go to our map view by doing that or pressing 9. As you can see, it's still in the last place, a so whole forest. So I'm going to click there with my control and the left mouse button. And then I'm going to click out and then up here, go. I'm going to type you up there, like so. Just need to bring myself up a bit because it's just higher than what it is. Here we go. Like so, just loading your station and your assets. And I'm going to add just to stagecoach. We'll do stagecoach here or SWT. One there like that. Uh, click down with time. Like so, and we're going to make one more because it's going to S12 coach again. Like so, now you need to check that you're fully on the platform. Well, I'm going to move this up because it's hanging off the platform at the rear. So use that and bring the whole consist selection and of course, sometimes we'll need to zoom up a bit more to get a uh, better view. So move it about like so, like so there. Right, so I can, I've still got leeway to tell it to call at that platform. So what I should do is add a driver marker to him. And then I shall then go back into my timetable view. And from here, I shall look at my next service, which is service one. Click on that. As you can see, it's brought me to the uh, driver icon for that. So we're going to change his head name and we're going to call him 2Z95. I'm going to take him off special and call him an express passenger. And then we're going to click OK. No, we're not. We shouldn't have done that. Don't just ignore that. You could stay in timetable mode. I forgot. You're supposed to click the close button for that and then add your markers or your pickup instructions. So I'm going to add it for this station here. So he picks up passengers here. Next station he'll pick up passengers from is right down the other end, which is this station here. So add another one here and then click on the green line there. Green is platform marker, yellow is a siding marker, orange is a destination marker and a P and a, and a purple circle is a portal. Now a portal is in quite important in a route and the most routes come with them because you can send artificial trains to the portal and it will once their duty is done and you send it to the portal, it now the, the simulator no longer needs the resource of your computer to keep that one in its memory. So that will help with your frame rates if you've got a poor com performing computer. And it's also a good sort of scenario keeping because otherwise you're just going to clog up with trains everywhere. And it's just going to look absolutely awful. You can send as many trains as you like into the portal. Another thing I must mention. Uh, is that sometimes the dispatcher or the route planner of um, Railworks doesn't do it the easy way around. As you can see, uh, the secondary service 
is scheduled to go from Highland Forest downwards to the unnamed, the yet to be named uh, Birdfoot Station there, as you can see it's more of a Birdfoot style station, uh, go along the line and go round the loop back on itself to the station, unnamed station just here. However, it's decided it doesn't want to do it that way. So what you'll need to do here is add the flag, which is a waypoint, which tells a scenario dispatcher that you want the train to go this way. Uh, if the route creator hasn't put markers in, then you can add a, a marker to the scenario as well as a portal into the scenario so that um, it doesn't affect the route, but that scenario can work much better because you have added scenario markers and it hasn't affected the, the uh, route at all. So then if you do another scenario, then you can just, it'll be back to normal. And if the app, the, the cater updates the route, then again, it won't uh, affect the scenario, hopefully, because you've put the scenario markers in yourself. So let's do, I've put, I'll show you how to add a scenario marker in a different tutorial. I've already laid a couple here and I'm going to tell the train that I want to go via this destination. It's orangey brown, so that means it's a destination. So you wanted to go that way, but again, it still doesn't want to play ball. As you can see, very weird dispatcher we've got here. So hopefully, if we add another, oh, another, no, hang on a minute. Yeah, we've got to. Uh, Delete that for a second. I've just realised I've got to put that up here before it gets to platform 14. And then it should. Now, again, it's still not playing ball. I told it. For some bizarre it just doesn't. I don't know why it's doing this. Dispatcher can be a night. It can be a nightmare to write a scenario sometimes. And as you can see, it gives it chucks up some amazing results here. I mean, why it wants to go the longer way around, but it can simply just use the run round loop here because you can get across to it. As you can see here, the track is laid to get across it. And uh, for some reason, it wants to do it the hard way around. Which I don't understand. So, what we might need to do is. Um, Oh, that's, got, that's thrown me ever so slightly because it's I don't want it to go that way. For some reason, it wants to take me the longer. It's absolutely silly. Absolutely bonking mad. Um, let's see if I can change its mind or persuade it a little bit by asking it to then go via this here. I can't see it happening, but uh, it's worth the try. Again, you may have to experiment with the scenario. There you go. All I had to do is ask this, ask it to waypoint now instead of going that way. It's decided it's, it, it, the dispatcher said, oh, right, yeah, that's what. So uh, you may need to do a little bit of um, um, jiggery pokery with this. I mean, I've had to add two waypoints in this to make the, the scenario dispatch or the pathfer and take it the way that it's supposed to go as, and make the scenario work as intended. As you can see, it takes it round in the loop then. So, yeah, so you may need to do a bit of extra work and sometimes it may not be possible to do something because the dispatcher or the pather can't find a way to do it. So, um, not everything is possible. You just have to go on the um, kindness of how the, the dispatcher feels and uh, hopefully he lets you do the, the route you want to do. So, that is how you force a service to do a route you want it to take instead of um, accepting the, the uh, way that dispatcher thinks the best. And uh, that is how you set up a standard scenario. I hope this has been of use to you. The next tutorial will be, as I said, will be a scenario on how to add a scenario marker and that will be coming soon. Thank you for watching this tutorial.